All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, you know, to talk about everything in terms of professional wrestling, all the action inside and outside of the ring. Uh, backstage rumors and dramas, you know, behind the curtain. Also, uh, you know, wrestling contract statuses, uh, maybe some um, potential storylines, injury updates, et cetera, et cetera. Just kind of reflect on what we talked about real quick. We had our AEW Dynamite review. Now we're going to talk about my Thursday night wrestling preview. But before we get into any of that, I want to remind you guys to go ahead and hit up that super chat box. If you got a burning question or a hot take in terms of professional wrestling, or it's just something you're dying to get off your mind here at the GSMC Sports Network, we are all ears a thousand and ten percent this show was all about keeping the conversation lively and making sure your voice is part of the mix so don't be shy don't uh, go ahead and drop your thoughts inside that chat and if you really want to make a difference uh make sure you uh, hit up you the, that super chat box with that comment that question just hit that dollar sign below the chat box send in your message and it's guaranteed to get featured on the show Plus, it's a great way to keep the lights on and bring you even more awesome wrestling content. We are absolutely so grateful for you guys here at the GSMC Sports Network. Um, you know, those who join us here, you know, show to show, your support makes all the difference. So let's keep the conversation going. Make, you know, make the show a hell of a lot better with you guys' you know, engagement. Make it bigger, better, and stronger than ever. And the super, uh, the super chat box is not your thing remember that we steer we are still here at the gsmc podcast.net at the tips and donations podcast.net shoot me your comments questions and concerns go ahead and tell me what you like tell me what you don't like in terms of professional wrestling uh you Superman punch, super subscribe, you know, the Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show. Also follow the show, follow the network here at the GSMC Sports Network. We do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity, thousand and ten percent. So yeah, don't be shy. Go ahead and be part of the show. Dying to hear from you guys. Definitely love how the chat box is filling up. Love that. All right, so we have our Thursday night wrestling preview. But before we, uh, you know, get into that, I have the chat box from um, we also. Oh, we have a, sorry, technical difficulties. There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a chat box from uh, Alicia, Alicia Kern again, Adult Juice. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. That's awesome. I got some nerds and chips for my snacks. I, I got to be, I'm a nerds guy. I'm a nerds guy, 1,010%. Um, and then I also got a chat from uh, Logan James K. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of Mina Shirakawa since stardom. I want to. I want Mina Shirakawa in WWE, but I know Mina Shirakawa. Uh, you know she likes to go to AEW, and you know I feel like ultimately when it comes to not you know I'm not trying to like throw shade at WWE, but you know when it comes to like Japanese or Asian kind of you know culture like wrestlers and stuff like that, I feel like they are kind of you know they're when they kill in the Ring of Honor, they kill in an AEW. They kill it in um, because you have this new merger between Tony Khan, New Japan Professional Wrestling, the CMLL. Tony Khan wants to make wrestling international. He wants to have ties with absolutely everybody. The the MLW, the C, the game changing wrestling, the CGW. Uh, there's a lot of other wrestling promotions out there, and WWE has always such. They've always done such a great job of closing that forbidden door. You know, kind of like you know the Exorcist of not letting a uh, you know, uh, other wrestling promotions kind of get into it. Um, I have a chat from my man, Isaac Delgado. Um, hey, GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast. I'm going to school. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm going to school tomorrow morning and I'm going to get a hair a character guide to my house tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to, you know, my uncle Gus, uh, Gus's house for his birthday. Bath day, birthday, birthday party. Birthday party. Hey, man, happy birthday to your Uncle Gus. That's sick. Hopefully he has, you know, too many more. Everybody who's watching right now, we're going to sing happy birthday to Gus. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I don't have to, you know, I, I would absolutely, I would thousand ten percent would love to do that. But I know everybody, uh, you know, they don't want to hear my my ugly voice. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to my Thursday night wrestling preview. So Thursday, 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 Thursday is upon us. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. The things are sparking up in terms of Ring of Honor professional wrestling. First, we have a Ring of Honor uh, World uh, Championship match between Mark Briscoe against the Beast Mortos. 
And this is going to be a great match. I feel like overall, you have both competitors. The Beast Mortos have been absolutely... He's been phenomenal. He's been phenomenal. I know Don Callis has his eye on him. Well, that I feel like he should because what has happened recently with Kyle Fletcher and the whole Will Ospreay thing, and then uh, now you kind of have new. You've had you have new blood on the Don Callis family. You have um, you know, you have Beretta. Uh, you also have uh, Roosh, Roosh from AEW. So a thousand and ten percent, I feel like you know the Beast Mortos, but it's gonna take a lot. It's gonna take a lot to dethrone Mark Briscoe. I feel like he's, uh, you know, he's the people's champion. I felt, I felt, I fell in love with him every, you know, I fall in love with him every single time I see him on the mic. You know, he's so likable from professional wrestling standards. And it's not like one of those things that's like, okay, all he does is talk on the mic. He's a smooth talker. Whoop de freaking do. But, you know, you see this guy inside the ring. This guy absolutely, you know, he's an arsenal attack. He can technical wrestling. He can do submissions. He can be a powerhouse, maybe sometimes. And that's, you know, a thousand ten percent. That's, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's Mark Briscoe. You know, when he was a tag team champion with his brother Jay before his Jay before his brother Jay, you know, uh, tragically uh, passed away in a car accident. Uh, it's, you know, uh, they were great. They were great. One of the best tag teams in terms of professional wrestling. If you kind of look back on headlines about. Uh, maybe like five, not five or six years ago. I don't know. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But they were, they were just great. They were just great all in all. And I, you know, definitely love uh, Mark Briscoe and the way he's kind of handling it. Um, you know, we also have an eight man tag match, the Ring of Honor World, six man champions, Dustin Rhodes, teaming up with Marshall Von Eric and Ross Von Eric, the Von Eric brothers, um, uh, going against, oh, wait, they're, they're teaming with Ring of Honor World tag team champion, Sammy uh, Guevara. Taking on the Undisputed Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, and the Dark Order. Obviously, you saw the Undisputed Kingdom drop their titles to Dustin Rhodes and Sam uh, and Sammy Guevara. You know uh, something I love about Dustin Rhodes, like he's still. If you don't know who got Dustin Rhodes is, uh, he's Gold Dust. Gold Dust. You know, <laughs> um, you know, in his later years inside AEW, I feel like he's still killing it. I feel like a thousand ten percent, he's still giving the crowd what they want. I feel like, you know, he's still putting on great matches. I know he wants to announce his retirement tour pretty darn soon. Obviously, I feel like that's a lot going around right now. People are speculating that, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin is hitting a retirement tour. Also, you're going to have John Cena and now maybe even potentially Dustin Rhodes. So, you know, a lot of stuff kind of going on that could possibly alter the career of Dustin Rhodes. I guess, you know, when you get older... You know, you don't necessarily want to kind of put yourself in this position where you can kind of get kind of get hurt. You don't want to get yourself hurt. Like that's that's the worst thing that could possibly happen. So, you know, we have that match tonight. We also are going to have a one on one match between Tony Nese and Leo Rush. I can't wait to see these guys go at it. Both of these guys are very they're very, you know, they're entertaining to watch inside the ring, although the promos kind of. Kind of lack a little, you know. I do like Leo Rush though. I've liked Leo Rush ever since he debuted in WWE, uh, 205 Live, which is kind of ironic because we're going to be talking about both of these guys later on in the show. So <laughs> make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, but uh, Tony Nice, premier athlete, this guy, you know, has impressive written all over him. Leo Rush looking for that push, and both of these guys with the victory will ultimately push their career, you know, further. Next, we have a pure rules match between Angelico and Aaron Solo. We have a trios match between Cage of Agony, Bishop Khan, Brian Cage, and uh, Toa Leo uh, going against the Ring of Honor television champion, Atlanta Jr., Fuego de Sol, and Serpentico. Um, we also, also in action tonight, we have EJ, Nduka, Commander, Kuhan Ang, and Daddy Magic, and Trisha Dora, plus Marina Shafir taking on Tiara James. You know, I uh, Marina Mar Marina Shafir. She came into the world of Ring of Honor with so much momentum. She came in like I thought she was going to be like the next person to challenge Athena, and then she cut. Then she, I think she lost one or two matches. I knew for a fact she knew she lost one, and then it was like you know I feel like she's kind of fell off the the problem. That's kind of fell off a little bit. Like it's going to be nice to kind of see her if she defeats uh, James tonight. I feel like it's going to be a great way to kind of you know kind of spark up something else that could, uh, you know, potentially help your career to become a champion in the future. So a thousand ten percent, it's going to be pretty awesome. Next, we have our TNA Impact preview tonight on TNA. It's going to be pretty awesome. Tonight, we have um, 
we're going to see Mila Moore uh, versus uh, Zaya Brookside. Wait out um, the 22nd. Yeah, the 22nd. Uh, going to win this is technical showdown between Jonathan Grisham and also uh, Charlie Dempsey. Last week on NXT, you saw Charlie Dempsey defeat the Dawn of NXT, Tony D'Angelo, for that Heritage Cup championship. And I've, you know, I've been kind of saying that this whole time, ever since you saw TNA and WWE NXT form this uh, collaboration, um, you know, bringing the NXT Heritage Cup championship would be, it'd be, it'd be awesome. It'd be, you know, pretty awesome because a lot of people are still, you know, when they think of this big trophy and they're like, oh, cup, they think of the World Cup, they think of how it's defended across countries. And now you kind of have this cup defended across different wrestling promotions, which is, you know, overall, I feel like that's kind of cool, pretty badass. So, you know, definitely a thousand to percent. Uh, we have an Ultimate X qualifying match. We have Hammerstone battling Frankie Kazarian and Kushida and uh, Boot Binger. Uh, Gu- oh my God, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Gudhar, Gudhar, I'm not sure, sure about it. That. You know, taking on um, Jao Vito and the Laredo Kid. Rosemary takes on Alicia Edwards. And of course, we have a chaotic taxi match between Matt Cardona, Steph D. Lander, and a mystery partner taking on PCO, Rhino, and Zaya Brookside. And I, I gotta be honest, it sucks. I I, you know, I, that kind of hurts. It kind of sucks to see, you know, after everything that they've done in terms of promoting this, you know, whole PCO thing. Also, um, you know, Steph D. Lander with this uh, you know, marriage and stuff like that. Like it's uh, it's kind of let down. I thought, you know, with Matt Cardona returning, obviously that is a big deal. He's a great wrestler. He's dating Chelsea Green of WWE SmackDown. So I feel like they will ultimately maybe end up on NXT, which would be, you know, which is, I, I feel like that's ideal. I feel like that's ideal at this point. Nick Nemeth, I would understand why there is reluctance going back to WWE after basically the promotion under Vince McMahon, Gerald Briscoe, Pat Patterson. And everybody in terms of, you know, WWE created back in 2015, back basically saw Nick Nemeth and they're like, or it's Dolph Ziggler. They're like, you know what? Like, uh, like, I don't know. They used to kind of, I don't know, just immature jokes and stuff like that. Like it's uh, per reported by Nick Nemeth during an interview. Like it's, uh, you know, you, you wasted one of your top stars. You wasted a chance to have Dolph Ziggler kind of run WWE, then you put him in this um put him in the storyline with Vicky Guerrero and then with AJ Lee and then with uh you know with uh you know Lana and it's just it's just bad. It was it was really bad back in WWE circa 2000 like it, it was bad. It was pretty pretty bad. All right guys that was my Thursday night wrestling review. Now we're gonna get into my third segment. Recently we saw Bret Hart talk about everything that's happening in terms of Vince McMahon and the Janelle Grant allegations. And he basically told the press, he told, you know, people in interviews that, you know, he doesn't give a crap about Vince McMahon's feelings. Vince McMahon never gave a damn about my feelings when he did what he did in Montreal. And, you know, of course, also backing out of that contract stipulation. So, of course, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Bret Hart, Bret Hart's relationship with Vince McMahon. Also, uh, you know, what could have been, if Bret Hart would have stayed with the WWF slash WWE. So, uh, yeah, uh, do not touch that dial. And, hey, do not go anywhere. 